Hi, Angela. Uh, we're going to go over the answers for the Chapter 10 student work. Uh, I'm not taking a grade on this, so I want to make sure everybody has the correct answers. So uh, after you complete the answers for this, you can watch this video and make sure you got the answers correct. Okay, are we ready to go? Yeah. Here we go. You've already read John 3, 1 through 21, so we won't read that again. We'll read through it uh, as I uh, do the, the lecture, which will probably begin tomorrow. We didn't get that far during the um, second hour. So, uh, What clues in the passage suggest that Nicodemus was a prominent religious leader? What clues do you see in there? So he was a man of Pharisees ruler of the Jews. Okay, so he was a, a, a Pharisee. He was a ruler of the Jews. So if somebody called, uh, you know, somebody a ruler or a, um, a leader in our state or in our, our country, um, then we would know that that was a prominent person. What else? What other clues did you have to that? He doesn't just call him a teacher, he calls him the teacher in Israel. So either he was an important teacher or he may have been uh, the most important or among the most important teachers in all of Israel. The curriculum says that the fact that he came under the cover of darkness is a hint at that, and it probably is, regardless of his reason for coming at night, whether it's because he was just so busy uh, with his day job that he came at night, that would be a person that's uh, important probably. Uh, or if it's because he's afraid um, of what others might think because of his high standing. That could be a hint too. Uh, why do you think Nicodemus came to Jesus at night? And we've already talked about uh, in the opening about two possibilities there, but what do you think? So Grace? He was scared like, that people would see their leader going to somebody else who the Pharisees don't really like. There are, there are parts of the world, um, we, are, we are blessed to not be in one of those parts of the world, where if you align yourself publicly with Christ, there are going to be serious consequences, not only uh, for perhaps your uh, your vocation, your job, but also for your own safety or your family. Um, and uh, that was po probably true for Nicodemus, that there would be repercussions if he publicly aligned with Christ. Now, he ends up doing that. He ends up having the courage to do that. But at this point, uh, he maybe wasn't there. Um, although, like we said, Maybe he was just busy, and that's a possibility. The Bible doesn't tell us, so I don't want to read too much into it. How might we have, he have known where to find Jesus at night? Again, the Bible doesn't tell us, so we're kind of guessing at this. But how might he have known? Ben? Might have like, seen where he usually goes or like, followed him. Might have followed him. Uh, might have seen him and thought, okay, there he is. Tonight's night. I'm going to talk to him. I've been wanting to talk to him. Uh, and, and followed him. Uh, he might have even waited around until... Uh, you know, it was dark and everyone was gone. What are some other possibilities? Everybody said he followed him. Yeah, Kate. And Jesus is often followed by crowd of people. Yeah, so, and, 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 he, and he might have seen those people. It, it may have been he asked one of those people, where, where is Jesus? probably knew who some of Jesus' followers were. Another, another possibility is Jesus you know, had some pretty regular movements. Uh, certainly he did in Capernaum. If he were in Capernaum, everybody knew where to find him. Maybe he had a spot. Um, and, and maybe and we do know he took his, uh, his disciples frequently to the Mount of Olives. It tells us that they, they were there frequently. Probably even spent the night there many nights. Uh, and so maybe Maybe that's where he met him, and he knew where Jesus would be. We can't know for sure, of course, but all of those are possibilities. 
Why would Jesus describe salvation as being born again? What is it about salvation that is like birth? So it's a new life on a clean slate. So uh, physically, obviously, physical birth is, is new physical life. But spiritually, you have new life. Uh, Paul tells us if anyone is in Christ, uh, she is a new creation. He is a new creation. The, the past is gone, the new has come. So uh, we are new creations in Christ when we're born again. Uh, anything else anyone wrote down there? Uh, so yeah, a new, a new beginning, a new phase sort of thing. Verse 8 is very difficult to understand. What does verse 8 say? Go ahead. Well, wind blows where it wishes, and you hear its sound, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Okay. So that's a kind of a um, enigmatic. There's your, I think I... I think one of the words of the week was enigma. Enigmatic, meaning puzzling, difficult to figure out. So kind of an enigmatic answer. Um, so um, do you think Nicodemus knew what Jesus meant? Probably not. He didn't even get the born again thing, you know, like how am I gonna go back in my mom's womb? I'm a grown man, right? So he didn't even get that, so probably not. Would Jesus have said something to Nicodemus that was intended to make him have to think and ponder what he meant, and if so, why? Would he have said something? Oh, yeah, he did that all the time, didn't he? Uh, so why? I just thought of this just now, so last hour I didn't get this, so this is your special little nugget. He often challenged people to think. Think about who Jesus is and, and all that that means. And then think how often we try, I, maybe this is just me, okay? I sometimes, this is, this is kind of my default mode, if I don't know, then nothing can be wrong. <laughs> I would rather not know sometimes, because if I know, then I know something I don't want to know. Does that make sense? And I don't want to know something I don't want to know. Uh, and people are that way with Jesus a lot, right? If I just don't think about it, if I just don't ask, if I just don't pursue it, then I can pretend that everything is fine, right? Uh, and uh, I think that Jesus was kind of pushing those buttons in Nicodemus. Hey, think about this. Think about this deeply. Think about who I am. And, and Jesus will do that in all of our lives, not personally like he did with Nicodemus. But he'll bring about things that will cause us to go, Uh, and so I think he was trying to get um, Nicodemus to go a little deeper and think a little more deeply about, not only about what Jesus was saying, but about who Jesus is. What are the similarities between the story in this, uh, of the serpent being lifted up by Moses in no num Numbers 21? First, let's talk about what is that story? What, what do you know about that story? and then there's a serpent on it and if like you looked at it and you got healed yeah yeah so the, weren't they invaded by poisonous snakes or something yeah so they're invaded by poisonous snakes and they and Moses holds up this serpent it's weird right but let's not you know worry about too much how weird it is because we're not digging into that passage we're seeing how, what the relationship is um, but and, and and here's where Jesus says if I'm lifted up from the earth I'll draw all men unto me isn't, isn't that what he says here in, in John 3? No? He talks about being lifted up though, right? Okay. So when I was in high school, we had this praise song called Lift Jesus Higher. And it, it was very simple. It was a praise chorus, really. 
lift Jesus higher, lift Jesus higher, lift him up for the world to see. He said, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men unto me. That is not what Jesus meant. Jesus didn't mean if we lift Jesus higher, he will draw people to himself. He's saying, if I am crucified. That, that term lifted up was a euphemism. A euphemism is, is kind of, uh, well, an idiom would be another way of saying it, a colloquialism, but all those words are big words. Uh, kind of like you guys have slang, and you know what it means, right? I don't, because I'm old, but you know what it means. And I learned some of it because I hang out with you guys. Um, and everybody understands what that means. If you, if you took that out of context, and if you took it, um, we, we used to, when I was your age, we had this thing we'd say, you got used. And you know, if I took that out of, out of the context, if I would have said that to my parents, I would have gotten in trouble probably, but, um, but if I would have said that to my parents, they'd be like, what are you using it for, right? Wow, that went by that. So we'll pick up here tomorrow. Remember they have like the serpent staff thing? Yeah, they have like the serpent. Give an example, example of No, like slang. from like, the doctor. You know, like that, the medical serpent staff? That's the two snakes, right?